Good morning from Kings Wharf, Bermuda, where it is a stunning Friday morning here. It's actually our last day in Bermuda. We've been here for two days now. We've been here since Wednesday morning, and we will be departing in just a few hours this afternoon. And here we are now on the pier alongside the ship here. You can see the Norwegian Joy here behind me, 20 floors high above me, a huge ship. Uh, but it's been a fantastic time. Like I said, we're nearing the end of our cruise now. We've actually only got uh, part of the day today. Oh, there's a, there's a car coming. Uh, you got to watch for traffic here. We're on this dock. Sometimes there's cars coming and they're like waving us all of a sudden. Um, but we are nearing the end of our cruise. We got today in port. We're we'll leaving around 3 or 3.30 to make our way back up to New York City to cover the 700, 800 miles, whatever it is, back. If that, six, 700 miles whatever it's less than a thousand is all i know but it should be a great rest of the cruise because the cruise has been fantastic so far i also wanted to show you around here real quick the celebrity eclipse also in port here with us in bermuda they came down from bayonne new jersey which is essentially in the new york area as well so my plan this morning is just to do a walk around and show you a little bit of what's in king's wharf itself in case you're coming here and i highly recommend that you do but i'll just show you a quick walking tour and some of the stuff that you might be able to see that's right here in close proximity to the ship without an excursion or anything else and speaking of excursions and transportation as soon as you get off the ship here there are a lot of folks uh, with buses and taxis and a lot of the uh, excursions if you book a private excursions they'll be meeting right here but this is kind of like the transportation hub uh, for Bermuda and specific to here in Kings Wharf. You also have fantastic vantage points here alongside this uh, sidewalk to take pictures and stuff, you know, to get the whole family together right here. You can get the ship in the background. Uh, also look how incredibly blue the water is. Um, it looks a little rainy today. I think it might rain. The forecast has some rain in it, but uh, sometimes the sky can be just as blue. Blue sky, blue water makes for incredible photo opportunities right here with the ship in the background. All right, so do a little bit of wayfinding for you. So we left the ship over there, we walked down this sidewalk here, and then behind me right here, past the scooter and moped rentals right over there. If you wanna, if you're interested in any of that, you can do that there. But under this tent right here that says Bermuda, home of the 2017 America's Cup, this is where the ferry boat leaves from. And you can catch this ferry uh, over to Hamilton. Hamilton is the capital of Bermuda, and it's one of the largest cities here. Also St. George, there's a ferry for that. And in fact, right over by the ship, there's actually a ferry to St. George that Norwegian provides for free so if you're selling here Norwegian know that there is a ferry that they operate for free it's right beside the ship that's where you board that one but other ferries board right here under this tent and it's actually very affordable if you want to know the prices and timetables uh, and things like that I just encourage you to google Bermuda Kings Wharf uh, ferry schedule and you will find that information I did take the ferry the other day from Hamilton it was about 15 minutes to get over here from there it's not that far and right across from the ferry stop is the Bonefish Bar and Grill. This is one of the large restaurants here in Kings Wharf that you can dine at and get some local cuisine. Like I said, it's right here across from the ferry. So our little walking tour continues. And the cool thing about the dockyard here is you can see like these old buildings are like the authentic buildings from like, you know, hundreds of years ago when this actually was an operational dockyard. So you can see this over here. This is uh, the clock tower. You can see the two clock towers over there. A lot of shops over here. There's your Diamonds International. I know a lot of folks love that. And again, you can still see our close proximity to the ships over there. And this is a genuine question. Like, do any of y'all actually go to Diamonds International? Like, I see these in every port in the Caribbean and, and uh, I mean, really all over the world. But does anyone actually go? I guess they do because they're in business. But have any of you gone there? What's been your experience? I'm not a jewelry or diamonds person, so I don't really have a need to go there. But I'm genuinely curious what the draw is. I was last here about two years ago and I do feel like there's more shops and things filled in here now. Cause I feel like last time I was uh, at the Clock Tower Mall, this is where we're at right here. Uh, a lot of stuff was closed, but that was just right a year after cruising had resumed. So I think a lot of the stuff might've been shuttered during the pandemic, but now they're getting back on their feet, getting back up, back opening back in business again. So uh, definitely come over here and check it out. See if there's things you might want to shop or buy here. and you know try to buy local as much as you can because it does help the local businesses and stuff it helps the local infrastructure to stay strong uh, because tourism is you know the number one industry here so they depend on us coming here and buying local and buying from these shops so uh, where you can skip the diamonds international and things like that try to buy local just to help out the local economy and I'm not gonna walk down there but there you can see the clock towers up there and then I'll pan around here so you can see this little square out here, this is a neat place too. I'm gonna walk across the street here. Um, 
this is because you can't come and hang out over here if you just want to maybe just have a leisurely day just sitting out here people watching or cruise ship spotting whatever and you can do all that right here in this little square maybe a good place for a picnic so while we're here at the park and we can have a good view of the cruise ships i did want to say uh we are here for three days because this is a seven day cruise down from new york and not many places to go from new york city in a week uh, but it, it has been really cool to be here for three days because it's afforded us opportunities to just be relaxed. You know, it's not like you pull into the port at eight o'clock in the morning and leave at four in the afternoon like most cruises and you have to hurry up and fill the day with excursions and things. We were able to really make the most uh, of each day and really make the most of being here in Bermuda by having three days here. It's almost like we had a hotel and you could go out and explore every day and we've been here for three days. Uh, but I did want to say there are only two berths here, only two cruise ship berths in Royal Navy Dockyard here in Bermuda. And in fact, both the Joy and the Eclipse, that's essentially what they're doing. They're both sailing out of the New York area on these seven day voyages all summer long. They leave New York, have a couple days at sea, they're parked here for three days, then they go back and they repeat the same thing every week. And when they're gone, literally like today or tomorrow, more cruise ships will be coming in to fill their spots and it'll be here for the weekend and then they'll move again and then they'll park here. So it's really interesting how this port works. It's very unique as is the entire island of Bermuda. It's just a really cool place. You can sell it to a lot of places in the Caribbean. That's a vibe down there. This is a completely different vibe. Bermuda is a beautiful place, pristine beaches. The water is so clear and beautiful. Uh, and right now it's May 31st, it's 74 degrees out. There's a nice light breeze. It's not as hot and muggy as it is in the Caribbean. So this is just an advertisement, I guess now, uh, of why you should come and visit Bermuda. You should take a cruise here, uh, even if it's a cruise that only comes to Bermuda, because I promise you there's a ton to do. And those two or three days, however long you'll be in port, will be over before you know it. So did just step into the Clock Tower Mall just to sort of show you what's in here. Uh, and it's a great selection of different shops, a lot of local vendors uh, that you can buy clothing from. They have jewelry, they have food over here, a little cafe. So a lot of things look like this way. It's very big in here too and a lot of shopping available. So we just walked from all the way down there. Down there was the Clock Tower Mall. Walked all the way down here. Wanted to show you real quick the Snorkel Park Beach Club. Uh, and this is actually a beach that you can go to. It's right here. You see the cruise ships again, right there for wayfinding. But I think it's like 15 to $20 per person to get in. Uh, and then there's different amenities and things that you can buy once you get in. But I'm not gonna go all the way in, but I'll put in a clip here that I took yesterday from over uh, at the fort slash museum. So you can sort of see how big the beach is and everything. Uh, but yeah, this is a beach that you can go to and it's right here. Not far, just steps really from the cruise ships. And now we've walked just up the street from Snorkel Park Beach Club to the National Museum of Bermuda, which is the entrance right here. You go across this bridge and into the wall of the fort there to enter. Now there is an additional cost associated with this. It's $18 per adult, and there is special pricing for seniors and for children, but it is really worth it. I was able to go yesterday and walk around. I spent actually about two hours there, and it was just really beautiful inside. There's a lot of old buildings in there, really historic buildings. And the museum just tells the story of Bermuda, like how it was discovered, how it was founded, uh, just all of the years, all the shipwrecks, I really enjoyed that exhibit talking about all the various shipwrecks of Bermuda. So it was a really cool museum. And then you can also go into the large house that's over there and there are great views from up there. You can actually get a really good view of the cruise ships. You can get a good view of all the surrounding waters and the reefs that are surrounding Kings Wharf. It's just a really fascinating, really cool place to go. I cannot recommend enough if you enjoy museums if you enjoy history and learning about the places where you're traveling and you have the time when you're here in Bermuda to check it out because like I said it is $18 per adults but that ticket that they give you, you can come and go all day long as much as you want so maybe you want to come in the morning check some stuff out come back later in the day you certainly can do that so check out the National Museum of Bermuda they have so many cool things to see and I'm really glad that I went now we're gonna walk across the street from the museum because over here we have the Bermuda Arts Center and then there's also the Cooperage, which is home to the Frog and Onion Pub. Uh, and there is outdoor seating for Frog and Onion right here. But this is another uh, dining establishment where a lot of people come when they visit Kings Wharf. See, they do have a menu posted right outside here. And then when we walk inside, uh, the restaurant is over here on the right. And 
and here's the entrance to that. And then over here on the left, there's more gift shops and shopping. Uh, and then you can keep walking straight out the door here and it'll take you out into a courtyard that if you walk through, it'll take you back out to where we were earlier down that central district of Kings Wharf uh, where you got a lot of the shops and things. So back on the ship now, I wanted to say I ordered uh, some of these waters before the cruise and this is my last one. So I'm in need of water. And even though I have the unlimited drink package that was included with my fare as part of the free at sea promotion, the unlimited drink package does not include water. You do have to pay extra, even though you can get sodas and any liquors or wines or whatever, water is not included. So I just looked inside of the room service menu. Bear with me while I get to the proper page here because they do have Swift. Not Taylor Swift, but just Swift. Delivery on demand. Um, it's different drinks that you can get on demand brought to your stateroom. But they do have water packages here. And you can see a package of 12 is $19.95. A package of 24 is $34.95. And you can get 48 for $49.95. So I think, even though I've only got two days left, uh, you know, I can drink some water. So maybe I'm going to get a 12-pack ordered to the room now. For 20 bucks because I did check downstairs earlier like I was like can I just have a bottle of water and they said it was four dollars per each of those that's a ripoff so I think if I buy it like this this will be my best bet so I'm gonna do that now and we'll see how fast it takes to get here so I did just call and place that order uh, it's 11 15 and they said that it would be $24 for 12 so basically two dollars each because in addition to the 1995 they also charge a 20% service gratuity on it so $24 per 12 waters and I have the unlimited drink package like that's not great why is it water included like if anything's included on a drink package it should be water but that's you know it's cliche to say but that's how they get you I guess you know they're giving you a free drink package but they're gonna make you pay additional for water make it make sense it's now 11 25 so 10 minutes later it's here all right so it's now 2 45 in the afternoon Earlier, I headed down to the local to get some lunch, enjoyed some of those sweet chili wings, which are a favorite of mine. And then I wanted to try the hot dog. Uh, and the hot dog is really good. I like the bun. It's almost like a pretzel bun that they have that on uh, with some sauerkraut, and that was really good. But now I think we're getting ready to sell away because, like I said, it is 2.45, and we're scheduled to sell away at 3. So let's go check that out. They are getting the ropes ready down there. They've got some of the ropes slack, so we're getting ready to throw those off as we set out for New York. And the uh, Celebrity Eclipse is still behind us. I think they'll be leaving probably just after us this afternoon. So now sailing away in full force from Kings Wharf, Bermuda. But you see the beautiful blue waters. Those blue waters indicate shallow water. There's a lot of reefs here, um, very shallow water, so it's easier to run into something or run a ship aground. In fact, it takes a very experienced pilot to navigate these waters. So you have to take a very odd course to get into Kings Wharf. So you see we left from there. We're actually gonna go out uh, a little ways and then we'll circle back and we'll actually end up very close to the land right over here uh, near St. George. We'll actually go to the other side, almost to Bermuda, to exit out to the ocean because of all the reefs and the shallow water in here. So we'll meander a bit, but it's really cool. So don't be fooled if you're here uh, in Bermuda sailing on a cruise and you're watching the sail away and you get to about this point and you're like, all right, I can go back to my room or go inside now because the sail away is over. No, 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 like keep watching because you're gonna get more incredible views. We'll get really close to the land and see more of Bermuda up close. St. George right over there on that side once we get over there. Also notice, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so here. See just how shallow that water is because see how much of it is being churned up uh, off the bottom. You can see how much sand and stuff, um, some silt and sand off the bottom of the, the bed of the ocean there is being churned up by our, our wake. So that just shows you how shallow the water is here. Uh, and how maneuvering, you just have to be very, very careful to be captain. But they're experienced, they know what they're doing. But I just wanted to tell you how unique this uh, sailing into and out of Bermuda is. Don't take it for granted if you're sailing here. You can see now what I was talking about because that's how close we are uh, to the very shallow water. You can see some of that uh, reef right there is actually sticking up above the water. So we sail right by 
very, very shallow water. You can see it's on both sides of the ship, on that side and over here on that side. So that's pretty cool. So now we've been sailing for probably 45 minutes or so and a little bit of wayfinding all the way over there. Let me zoom in real quick. You can see the eclipse still in King's Wharf. So that's King's Wharf. So you see how we sort of went out that way, meandered around and came back here. And now we are getting very close over here to St. George. And this will be our final uh, glimpse of Bermuda here in just a few minutes as we pass the uh, land over here. We will be headed out to the ocean, but we will go past a section of St. George before we finally make the turn north to head out to the Atlantic. But I just wanted to show you, because I think that's really cool. I, I love geography and navigation and things like that. 